It's movie talk time today on the lineup. We've got a new Saw movie from Chris Rock, actually. And then on top of that, we got word that the Mortal Kombat movie is finally moving forward, planning to shoot at the end of the year. This is quite the lineup here, and I am so excited that I'm in good company right now. I am your host, Perry Nemroff. I will be steering this ship, which might be a little bit of a rocky boat today with these two guys in it. <laughs> like, have a little giggle fest. I, bl I blame you. I blame, I blame Greg. I'm happy to be here, as always. Good to see you. It's his fault. Oh, it, sorry. We were told to be quiet 15 I, seconds. I can't listen. And I can't 30 listen. seconds, he was like, so we get serious now? Yeah. Like, shut the hell up. movie news. We got to take this serious. Listen. We got to get very serious. We're talking about Chris Rock and Saw. Damn it! It gets no serious than this. Shouts out to Adam Rock Paper Saw. <laughs> Adam Smith in the booth, y'all. Gunning to get that tagline when it. that movie comes love out. It so much. All right, let's talk about this Saw story because it is a fascinating one. So Chris Rock is actually set to expand the Saw franchise with a spinoff film that's going to bring back Saw two, II, three, and four director Darren Lynn Boozman as well as original creators James. James Wan and Lee Whannell. Lionsgate and Twisted Pictures are releasing this one and they've got it scheduled for an October 23rd, 2020 release date. On top of that, sources are saying that this new film isn't going to be a reboot. It's expected to work within the existing Saw mythology. Thank God. There are so many interesting pieces to the story right now. So, uh, Jay, let's kick it off with you. What was the first thing you thought when you saw this news today? <laughs> Black people go live through the whole movie, David Jigsaw, not killing nobody. Let me tell you about black people in horror movies. That's literally like every Chris Rock joke that you can apply to this. Oh, yeah, you can use can apply to this, but it's it's interesting because you would never think to hear Chris Rock being involved. Like you would yeah. hear him being in the movie. Something like that, but not hearing of bringing the franchise back. I think that's the whole <laughs> different thing. It was just like Chris Rock, all right, man, I understand get all your paychecks, but uh Fine, cat. If you need a big black dude to die like the second one shot in the face in a hallway that nobody cared about, I'm here. I'll take that bullet. <laughs> I was really surprised when I first read the headline, and then I actually started to think about it a little more. And then we were talking about it with Jeff, and he brought up uh, Danny, uh, Danny McBride and David Gordon Green doing the Halloween movie, which mm -hmm. at the time that, that was announced, yeah. it was kind of surprising. And yeah. then I started to think about Chris Rock's behind the scenes credits, and he has a significant amount of experience. Uh -huh. So I just, I guess I just didn't expect him to be a big Saw fan and have a hot take on the Saw franchise. So I think that was the most shocking thing to me. We didn't hear about it in no stand up sets. I was watching Saw the <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I, you're a big horror fan, and you would know as well as anybody that comedy and horror mesh really mm -hmm. well together. Yes, they do. And uh, yeah, besides like Danny McBride, I think it's exciting when anyone with a comedy background gets involved with horror. You know, Jordan Peele hopping in to get out. Uh, well, Danny McBride on the Halloween franchise. To me, this, I don't know, people are seem very surprised by this. I don't know why I don't feel. I wasn't expecting it, but I'm not necessarily surprised by it. And I think it could be reinvigorating for it because I like, I actually was one of the few people who thought the last Jigsaw movie was okay. Thank you, Thank Jay you. Washington. I like the Jigsaw movie. Yeah. I want to high five you so badly, but I couldn't like claim ownership to that statement. I so I will keep my high five to myself. I suck at high fives. I have like, <laughs> I have a hard time. I always get nervous. No, I, I, <laughs> I, 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 I liked yeah. it. I, you know what? I understood the twist and stuff. Everybody was like, wait, how is he alive and all this? If you haven't seen it, spoiler alert. But it's an old, he's not alive in the movie. It's keeping the legend alive. Yeah. And so you can build off that from what you had in Jigsaw. Mm -hmm. You have somebody else who's taking the place of a Hoffman, who's, you know, putting the traps together and following the legacy of John. Yeah. So it's not difficult. And again, yeah, the surprise is Chris Rock himself. A comedian getting involved in horror isn't a surprise. Yeah. Yeah, you'll get Adam Sandler involved in this movie now. And then you'll get Kevin James involved in the, the whole, God, they're just the whole turn, crew you get from the They're going to turn the Grown Ups <laughs> yeah. franchise yeah. into... That's the, that's the thing. We're going to have a Grown Ups Saw connected uh, film universe well, now. That's well, my worst nightmare. Rob, I don't I, want that. I really, I really like the Saw franchise. I've seen them all. And I thought Jigsaw had a different visual palette, but plot-wise and tone-wise, it was still the same. Mm. And I think when you get someone like Chris Rock behind the camera, uh, at least involved as a producer, he, he wrote the script too or something, right? He came up with the story yeah, he came idea. Up with the story. He came up with the idea. I feel like Saw could use some humor. It's been eight movies deep and it's it takes itself pretty serious and when, it, and when it's cheesy, it doesn't feel intentional and I feel like having a little bit of levity and a little bit of self-awareness could go a long way in reinvigorating this I franchise. I wouldn't mind some humor. What I think it needs more than anything that maybe he can bring it, especially 
especially if he has something of a like a hot take, mm-hmm. you know, if he has some really smart idea to keep that legacy going. Because I do think yeah. that that was the best part of the last Saw movie. I think the plot got a little convoluted and mm-hmm. in certain spots a little predictable. And I think my biggest problem with the Saw franchise overall is that. I love the idea of Jigsaw and what he stands for and the traps. It's yes. all the stuff going on with the cops and like all the duplicitous characters behind yeah. the scenes TV that just yeah. they stuff. kept losing yeah. me from yeah. film to film. Even when that part of the story would kind of hit a stride and get me really into something, then all of a sudden I'd have a long break, I'd forget about them, and I wouldn't really want to revisit that in another film. So I feel like it's just about streamlining the idea and finding finding that hook again. Yeah. Like a hook yeah. that is different from the original, but also also stays true to what it was. And I think that's what they try to do with all the twists and turns to find a hook, but the hooks they give you are like letting out a bag of them on a table and just figure out which one are you going to latch yourself mm-hmm. onto. Because it's always, Sounds hey. Sounds like we're making a saw trap right now. Literally. <laughs> <laughs> I want to play a game. There are 97 hooks on the table. One of them Chris Rock picked for this film. You've got 12 seconds to figure out which one it is. The black one. Okay. so <laughs> That's a great trap. <laughs> but no, it's, you, you have all these twists and turns. And so the the problem has become like you were saying it makes it too many people who predictable to be helping out that are not in on the game as far as trying to get out of it yeah and you have that too much and so i don't but i don't think you want to streamline it at the same time where it's just like oh it's clear cut it's this person and then it's not Mm. it's just another person well i kind of wouldn't mind feeling trapped again yeah you know what i mean like like feeling trapped in like with the group of people that are trying to survive because every single time or at least this is just how i feel i'm pulled out of it not only am i not as interested in that narrative but it kind of takes away that claustrophobic feel where you're Mm. fighting for your life Mm. and i think the earlier saw movies and actually including saw 2 i think they were able to capture that a lot better with their set pieces but when that started to fade away as the movies continued the whole thing just kind of like lost its foundation for me ridiculous when they start trying to make the traps super big and super you know super uh, just how do they afford this like there were certain things they were doing it's like it's unnecessary i think the whole thing with the house and like a a warehouse or something like that that's fine but when you go to this whole big level of oh we've got a whole room in a silo that you got to use it's all of this barn that's for one trap stuff like that that's a bit of the problem but again back to with chris rock him being a fan of it and what you always want somebody involved with any film franchise is a fan of it. So they appreciate what it sure. is. Well, I, I also like the whole team. I mean, you got Darren mm-hmm. Lynn Bowsman returning, who was a very nice guy. I've met him twice. That was years ago. Maybe he's a jerk now. I don't know. <laughs> but but, but uh, I, I really liked his soft. I mean, soft four wasn't particularly my thing. But. You know what movie I really liked of his? Mother's Day. That is oh, such yeah? that is such an underrated movie, yeah. I really actually like Repo the, the Genetic Opera version, too. Yeah. I think. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh Darren, but also James Wan and Lee Wan L yeah. returning too. I, I feel like the whole like getting the original team back. I know uh, Darren Lynn didn't come in until Saw 2, but still they were part of the like when Saw was great. <laughs> and now you got Chris Rock in here. I, I'm pretty excited for this. I'm always excited to hear a new about a new Saw movie. It makes sense for Lionsgate too. Yeah. I mean, they're sitting on this major property. There are so many studios that are just like above and beyond mm-hmm. as far as franchises go mm-hmm. them trying to bring it back was going to be inevitable no matter what so i'm glad they're getting some fresh blood yeah. in and we have now. to real quick we have to bring one thing up they have a date for next year mm-hmm. which means this has already been in the works things have been happening already yeah. for them to have the look we already got the date we're releasing october 3rd 2020 so that lets you know they just decided to finally put stuff out in front in front of the camera and let people know what's going on. And hopefully yeah. we get to hear some casting announcements I, soon. I, I think yeah. they should, speaking of casting, I hope they leave Tobin Bell yeah. out of this one. Yeah, <laughs> we don't him, need to bring him back. Yeah, yeah. there's yeah. no need to bring Tobin Bell back. But put Wanda Sykes in a trap. I'm Please, <laughs> God, put Wanda you Sykes You don't need Tobin Bell back in the mix because you have his legacy and right. his vibe and you, just what he's done for the franchise overall. You're supposed to still you, feel you that. You know in that new Watchmen trailer when there was like a cult of Rorschachs? Uh, I'm yeah. kind of wondering if they're going to do like Cult of Jigsaw. Jigsaw. Yeah, Cult of Jigsaw. I'd be Jigsaw. down for that. Yeah. Okay. All right. We're going to have to wait and see. Hopefully, Cult of Jigsaw. Ha- That's actually not a bad title. Cult of Jigsaw. I waited for a movie talk to bring it up. <laughs> Cult of Jigsaw <laughs> with whatever the graphics, uh, the that title was. What was it again? Yeah. Rock, paper, rock, paper, paper saw. saw. Rock, <laughs> saw is ready. All right, guys. Before we move on to our second story, which is yet another James Wan-related story, we need to remind you about some content coming to the Collider Video YouTube YouTube channel and beyond. Check this out. Well, hello there. I'm Ken Napsock, 
one of the hosts of Collider Jedi Council. And I'd like to invite you to listen to our show, watch our show. It's on every Thursday. It's on the Collider video channel. And it's also available in podcast form if you'd like to listen to our sweet voices. On Collider Jedi Council, me, Christian Harloff, and a bevy of guests, I say, talk Star Wars. We celebrate Star Wars. We dig into the Star Wars news. We speculate everything about Star Wars, including your questions. So join us on Collider Jedi Council. You're going to have a great time. In addition to Jedi Council, if you want more Collider heroes in your life, you're getting it via a giant-sized podcast. That's what we're calling it right now with Amy and Koi. So go check that out on the podcast network if you want more heroes talk. Now, story number two. Yeah, Collider should really produce more content. combat. (laughs) (laughs) Collider's running low. (laughs) It's looking like Mortal Kombat is actually going to be hitting the big screen after all this time. New Line Cinema has scheduled the new film to shoot in Australia. Pre-production is set to kick off next month with production beginning later this year. James Wan is on board to produce the film, and it's going to mark the feature directorial debut of award-winning commercial filmmaker Simon McQuoid. So, you guys hear this news today. Did this surprise you at all? Because we've been talking about a new Mortal Kombat movie for. Ever We've now. been talking about this a couple times on, on Movie Talk, and the fact we got, and I was saying it before we started rolling, the video game, Mortal Kombat 11 success and what it's done has probably helped to push it forward. People like, look, you keep bringing out the yeah. games. Where's the movie? Yeah. So, well, I, I think it's perfect timing for it because for a variety of reasons. One, the game, mm-hmm. Mortal Kombat 11. Uh, the other thing is I feel like 90s nostalgia is really coming into the mainstream in, in terms of cinema. And I feel like the out of the video, I feel like Warner Brothers have been doing a pretty good job on their video game movies with Rampage, uh, mm-hmm. Detective Pikachu. I don't love any of those movies, but and Tomb Raider, I like those movies, but I don't love any of right. them. And I think that this, for the, for the combination of like Mortal Kombat being the only really well received even though it's really cheesy the 90s movie it's it has such a strong nostalgic factor to it uh mortal kombat was good mortal kombat annihilation made you want to stab that yourself was terrible. <laughs> stab in the eardrum no, with a that spoon. was terrible but i like the i feel like just with the, this whole nostalgia factor and the way they're uh, upping their game i've been waiting for this movie for a long time because i remember there was the web series that mm-hmm. came out which kickstart oh, all this yes. oh yeah mortal kombat legacy which kevin tancheron was originally attached to write mm-hmm. and direct this now it's been handed off to james Wan to produce I feel like they have to make this a hard R. I don't want it to go down the Hellboy route, though, where they were like, let's make this a hard R and only care about that. I, you you got to have it be very violent to really have it be a fresh take on it. Um, I got really distracted by a amusing uh, comment in the live chat from Dave Jordeo, who said, I'm telling you, a Saw reboot with Meryl Streep would do gangbusters in the box office. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, please, let's we bring were, it back. <laughs> <laughs> we, were just, we were just talking about Ma and Octavia Spencer yeah. just like going crazy killer in Ma, so it would only make sense for Meryl Streep to follow the same path, no? I say so. <laughs> Meryl Streep, do you want some biscuits? Are you hungry? Do you want biscuits? Who like, wouldn't watch that? Wow. Chris Rock and Meryl Streep. What can't you do, Jay? <laughs> Veering back to Mortal Kombat, though, the thing that I kind of latched onto is when this thing was in the very early stages, the first person who worked on the script was Oren Uziel, and he had said at the time, or he said in 2017 when he was promoting his feature directorial debut, which was a Netflix film, he said, if you took the Avengers or if you took a storyline like that and set it in sort of a hard R, over-the-top violence and hard-edged nice. world of Mortal Kombat, nice. that's how he described his version of the script. I that like was it. a while ago that he worked on it, so who knows how much of his script is actually going to stay intact for the version that they well, make, yeah. but when I I read that. It's exciting. That's 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 the Mortal Kombat movie I want. I just don't know if Warner Brothers and New Line are going to funnel a big budget, you know, size amount of money into a movie and then have it rated R. I think they should. I mean, Mortal Kombat Legacy was an R-rated web series, and it I th- got numbers. It got big. It's what got this oh, whole thing could, started. You yeah. take a few more risks with a re- with a web series because I also think about the Power Rangers, uh, the, the more R- violent the R- Power yeah. Rangers uh, web series, not web series, but short that film. Short but film. the Mortal Kombat game is so notoriously known for how violent. And it, you can't have you seen a gameplay trailer. Right. And you can't insane. even, and you can't PG thirteen that 
as because they made like you said the first one it has some cheesy moments with the Goro puppet but there are things you can do now to make it as violent as it needs to be and not say oh we're just gonna be R for the sake of R because it's yeah. a Mortal Kombat tournament listen well, to the thinking, title <laughs> yeah. thinking that through a little more it's good to have someone like James Wan on board yes. for a movie like that because he got his start with the first yeah. Saw movie he is a horror director who knows how to make the most out of very little so if they can apply that mentality mm-hmm. maybe we're talking about something more like a mid range budget film and not something extremely expensive totally. and in that case then they could have riskier things more blood and violence I'm, I've been wanting this because I think you can lend itself to some awesome practical designs as well a lot of really cool gore and, and minimize the CGI my main concern is the fact that it's a directorial debut from a commercial director yeah because a thing. Mortal Kombat has it's like they, they did Rampage right which doesn't have a big mythology to it but Mortal Kombat has such a vast mythology and such rich character backgrounds that I'm hoping they can really lean in on some strong character storytelling as well as some cool violence. Yeah, and the thing is with the story, like you said, the Avengers type buildup is cool, but it's a tournament also. Yeah, Mortal Kombat, so you have that tournament element. The only thing that will worry me is, again, for a first-time director, making fatalities look good. Because mm-hmm. you have to have some of these fatalities. Like, don't do like you did in the original movie where you had Johnny Cage give a friendship where he signed a picture. I'm okay with that. You want? <laughs> I want more of that. <laughs> I mean, like, if you're gonna if you're gonna go with this, it's gotta be you. You can have the one. No, but show. I want both. <laughs> I want, you, okay, I want, no, I want the gore. but no, like, no babalities. Nobody, but you better not turn a damn soul to a baby. But like, Sub Zero has to rip somebody's head out their spine. You oh, know what yeah. I'm saying? Scorpion has. There's certain things you have to see to feel Mortal Kombat esque with this yes. film. You can't just call it that and don't do certain things. It's a fan service to have. Uh, Sub Zero freeze somebody and uppercut them. To have Raiden electrocute the hell out of somebody and get up. Yeah. To have a black dude named Jax win the whole tournament and change slavery. There are things that need to happen in mm-hmm. this. I'm right. No, I'm right there with you. Okay, I know if you were with me with the slavery part, I didn't. I didn't know for sure. Uh, whatever you say in regards to that context, I'm going to say yes. Okay, thank you. All right, right, we got a question from the live chat right now, and this is coming from Antoine Antoine Donald, who's asking, yes, Perry, what Mortal Kombat character do you like? All right, I'll let you guys take it first. Who's your go-to Mortal Kombat character? I was Scorpion three years in a row for Halloween. Really? Yeah. Sub-Zero. What do you I, know? You know well, why? Because I want to freeze my baby mama just real quick. I just want to freeze and let her thaw out naturally. I f- d- don't just trust me. I don't like Latrice. I just want her to freeze and just stay there as an ice cube. Wow. You see how serious I'm looking at the camera? Wow. I mean this. Jay just pitched his Sub-Zero Origins movie. <laughs> <laughs> now you make me feel awkward saying Sub-Zero. No, 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 say Sub-Zero. <laughs> For whatever reason, I always picked that character whenever can, I wanted to play. Because you can whoop people with him. You can do the freeze where he makes the statue flip back. Somebody jumps in and catch him one time. Or you can be Scorpion and keep teleporting and stick him in and cheat. But Get over no. here. Come on, man. The classic <laughs> lines. All right. Anything else to add for Mortal Kombat? Otherwise, we're going to move on I think to Chris some Rock live questions. Him. We have a whole bunch. Let's do the questions. All right. Let's do it. Let us kick this off with Rick Samoris, who's asking, sorry for asking. Why are you sorry for asking? But do you guys know someone or anyone at Oh, <laughs> I get what's happening here. <laughs> sorry for asking. But do you guys know someone or anyone asking for Angel has Fallen and uh, your thoughts for the entire Fallen trilogy? I'm kind of asking for this movie. I, it's, you know, it falls under that guilty pleasure action realm. And actually, yeah. when I watched this trailer earlier today, I was pleasantly surprised so by how I. it looked. I loved the, I, I I mean, people know this out there. I love when trailers actually let you like sit and breathe and take in a scene mm-hmm. rather than go into like action, 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 action. Right, right. And before you know it, you've had a montage and not a sampling of a story. And I thought this one played really yeah. well. Yeah, it's a very action movie cliche plot still, but I like the direction of making it more personal. This director has done movies like Shot Collar and Felon and Snitch, which are these like gritty crime dramas or action dramas. And I think having that infused in here to get some like the fugitive inspiration, some born inspiration. I, I feel like it's good for the franchise. I don't love the fallen franchise, mm. but it, this looks fun. It looks like a better than average Gerard Butler action film. <laughs> 
<laughs> There's a place in this market for that. Clearly. <laughs> it exists. Clearly. Never forget, <laughs> Wait, never forget Geostorm happened, ladies and gentlemen. Geostorm. No, Geostorm never was that. fine. <laughs> it's like it's like mindless, uh, you know, action and destruction. Geostorm, Sometimes you want to just sit back and watch Geostorm it. Geostorm was the movie where Gerard Butler was still under contract and somebody was like, we got to make a film with him. What do we have? We could just throw him in. Well, we got a film about a weather machine that's going to kill the planet. Fine. And that's what Geostorm is. <laughs> it's all Gerard Butler. And that's a, that's a pitch I went for. Yeah. All right. Let's answer one. Here's one from Twitter, actually. This one came from Jan Nil 1982 who's asking, ooh, hot question here. Game of Thrones petition reaches 5,000 subscribers is the dark side of fandom. On the other hand, fan petitions have also resurrected shows like Community and spun off shows like Firefly into movies. So I guess the question becomes petitions, yay or nay? I think we need petitions to stop petitions for movies. <laughs> like, That's why I was through my this answers. Is, ridiculous how like how many petitions we get for every fan and you can't, and the petition the game of thrones petition is the dumbest thing ever and look if you signed it i really feel bad for you because it's a petition for them to remake the entire season quit playing oh is that the petition that's the petition <laughs> there's yeah. a petition for them to remake season eight stop do you understand how much money was involved with that that was two years worth of a process you're not nobody's gonna sit there and wait another quote-unquote two years to do that so i think it's getting bad now yes it did help it has revived shows it has given us spinoffs but that's when it's being productive this is not productive it needs to stop petition.org needs to make sure they have a verification process what are you doing this for and then there should be another box that says did somebody hurt you because that's the only reason these things are going like this well i wonder if maybe that's the answer to this because even though i very much disagree with the existence of a petition like this i started to think about all of the good things that have come out of stuff like that sure. and you need to figure out where to draw the line but how do you police a system like that verifying yeah. whether or not like I say your petition is worthy and yours isn't it's a place where you're supposed to be able to kind of speak and get the word out about something you feel super passionate about I do think that the constant outcry of being unhappy with certain forms of entertainment mm -hmm. is a very dangerous thing that we see happening more so mm -hmm. than ever sure. now between this and also just recently and I know I didn't like the sonic design either but the fact that you could have this this social media outcry that all of a mm -hmm. sudden sends a studio back to the drawing board that that's a little alarming to me but, that's a, but there's a difference the outcry you'll get outcry regardless it's just that now we're paying attention to it on social media you're going to get outcries regardless but when you start trying to gather signatures for people to come together and say hey this is how people really feel there are over a hundred million people in just the united states alone that love game of thrones whether you like it or not and then we're not talking about the world at large to say you got five thousand signatures 27 27 000 was the one i read you get that amount of signatures thinking that means something it means nothing in yeah. the grand scheme of things it means nothing you're just trying to sit there and say i'm doing something and i hope it'll catch wind that is a waste of petition.org i would be very curious to see certain metrics regarding petition.org and also social media use at what point do you basically say okay this is too much of an outcry we're in trouble now mm. i mean is yeah. are we really talking about a vocal minority here or has social media and these kinds of tools just woven their way into the entire industry well, that we need to start paying attention to it's, it it's not black and white because i think that well sonic is so much in pre-production stage still i mean they've come quite a way but they were in enough stage to be the like movies, I think we have no, the, the movie movie's was coming done. out later this year it was done oh, have the, they pushed for, the release date itself no, no, for an animated so what the thing is is people were really unhappy with the way right. sonic looked yeah, so, so they said they to were going to change yeah. the design but that movie was i mean i don't know if it was 100 percent finished but we're talking an a about an animated movie that takes years to make mm -hmm. and they have something like i believe it's a november release date so if they do a complete overhaul on the look of that character that is a significant significant amount of work and who even knows how much money that's fair i i just with game of thrones i'm still in that position like i'm on the divide of the show currently i I'm, i don't hate it i don't love it i'm, I'm like the hell i like it but i would never be like oh these people are lazy and they didn't work their asses off for two straight years to get this show going and i feel like it's kind of insulting to the people behind it to to do this kind of petition actually Here's a question to wrap up from Jack Dennis, who's asking, if you could remake a whole season of TV, what would it be? Dex Game of Thrones. <laughs> no. The last, se the well, last season of Quantum Leap. Dexter season eight. <laughs> the last season of Quantum, Quantum Leap. The last season. It, granted, we finally got to see Sam leap into some very notable characters, 
But when the way it ended, when he just, oh, well, he just leaps through time and he never gets home. His daughter is a genius. They set it up in the episodes. His daughter knows how to get him home. He should be able to go home or his daughter starts leaping to find him. Yes, I am petitioning for that. Mm -hmm. Bring me Quantum Leap a movie or bring the TV series back. I didn't watch Quantum Leap. Is that the series finale episode or is that the whole season? That was a series finale of him leaping, but throughout the final season, it was basically they brought in Elvis, Marilyn Monroe. He wow. was okay. he was Lee Harvey Oswald. They were bringing all these notable wow. and prominent characters for him to leap into. Well, damn. I mean, you're, who who is this? He suggested Dexter season eight. Yeah, um, which I you might know, meet him there. It was a little bit of a bummer of a season after all that. That was a pretty pretty bad season. <laughs> I feel like it was every season after what was it season four. Season four is with John Lithgow. Yeah, yeah. Season five is with uh, oh, oh what's it? Julie, uh, Stiles. Julie Styles. And oh, that, I was all right. With I like that, that one. one. I did. Um, but yeah, I, I guess Dexter season. How I Met Your Mother. Honest, the series finale upset me. Not the last season, but the finale did upset me. I, I think, think I would go for American Horror Story season four, which is Freak Show, because that idea, the setting, the performances, brimming with potential, mm-hmm. got me super invested. And then towards the end of the show, it was almost like. It's almost like American Horror Story gave me a big fat middle finger for caring. That's, and that's American Horror Story. I'm very, yeah. I'm still very sore about that one. So I would redo that. All right, guys, that is all the time we have for you today. But we do have a moment to say goodbye to the wonderful Jay and Greg. Thank, thank you, guys. As thank always, you. it's thank wonderful you. having you here. You're killing it here, Perry. You're killing an amazing it. job. Oh you're no, I'm gonna it. blush, and I, I don't know how to take a compliment. I love to spend my Thursday <laughs> Thursday afternoons with you. So you're great. Right back at you, Greg. The invitation yeah, like is always here Thursday for you. Here. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's nice. <laughs> We're gonna have you back real soon. Adam in the booth. Thanks for your hard work, Dorian. Rock, thank you for manning the live chat and social medias. Guys, we will see you tomorrow for a brand new episode. But before we get there, you know what you should do? You should like and share this episode and check us out in podcast form too. But then tune in tomorrow for a brand new show. Schnepp, we miss you. Happy birthday. We love you. Happy birthday.